Prader's Pigs From purple twilight, full of mist and rain, into the torchlight at my gates they came. Twelve men in sodden cloaks, mud splashed and cold, and to my porter said as I was told that they were bards from Gwyneth in the north. He did not ask their names or state or worth. All peaceful men were welcome in my halls. He lodged them well, brought water, wine and all, and sent a boy to bring them to the feast. They took their seats and when the noise had ceased, I asked their chief if one of his young men to entertain us might some story spin, or sing a song perchance to help time fly. He smiled and rose and looked me in the eye and said the custom of their company was the first night they arrived at some new house, the chief bard was the one who should perform. And so he would. In mellow voice and warm, he started then a story to unfold. Tale followed tale until the night grew old and laughter, wonder, fear, and even joy he conjured up. I never knew a boy or man could any better story spin. And when at last he came under the end, I bade him join me at my table high. He gladly sat and heaved a weary sigh. With me I filled his cup, and merrily we did converse, and pleasure was to me. His beard was black, to me he seemed full young, a green-eyed lad born with a silver tongue. Chieftain, he said at last, I'll tell my task. I've journeyed here a boon of you to ask. I've heard you own strange beasts, pigs they are named, not like wild boar, but creatures small and tamed. I ask their gift. I sighed and shook my head. Alas, my friend, though I myself were glad to give them you, I cannot. Not my own are they to give. <clears throat> they come from dark Anun, whose lord was years ago my father's friend. And them I may not give or sell or lend, till twice they've bred their number in this land. The stranger smiled. O oh Lord, leave my demand unanswered till tomorrow morn we meet. And then I'll show you how an answer sweet to find. For when you see what I shall bring, you may exchange them for some better thing. I laughed. It seemed a joke. No more was said. We drank our mead and off we went to bed. I dreamed that night of magic. Long ago a spell was laid on Dovet by a foe for vengeance and myself was held in thrall, and only by good luck escaped it all. That night again I knew captivity, the prisoners hopeless longing to win free, the treachery that sent me to that fate to satisfy a long enduring hate conceived before my birth. I woke in fear and lay awake to think. No warning clear it seemed to me, and yet I think it was. All things are clearer when you know their cause. Clear was next morning, for the day dawned bright, and all my dreams and fears had put to flight. Out of my court I went to take the air, and splendid was the sight that met me there. Twelve shields, as round and golden as the sun, lay sparkling in my courtyard, every one full worthy to be borne by any king and bright as blooming gorse in early spring. Beside them stood twelve stallions, black as night. Six young men held them by their harness bright, and that again was gold where iron should be. But fairer were those horses fine to see. Their manes and tails fell shining thick and long, their chests were deep, their legs were straight and strong, their eyes were bright, their hides like jet did shine. They looked as fleet as stags, swift as the wind. Beside them sat twelve hounds, a splendid pack. 
their breasts snow white and all else raven black. Their collars and their leashes were all gold. Their fangs gleamed white. Their looks were fierce and bold. While I stood gaping all this wealth to see, the green-eyed stranger came and greeted me. What think you, Lord? Is this a fair exchange for what I ask? Your creatures small and strange? Indeed it is. I scarce looked at his face. But I must counsel take, not choose in haste. I lied. Already then my heart was set upon those lovely horses black as jet. I called my counselors. Once they had gazed, they were like me by beauty's spell amazed. We all agreed, and on that selfsame day I let the strangers drive my pigs away. That afternoon I hunted my new pack. My sons and I bestrode those stallions black. And when at last at evening we rode home, they seemed as fresh and swift as when we'd come. We talked of nothing else that night in hall, but of my pigs we never spoke at all. T'was only next morn, waking in my bed, a thought came to me, cold as creeping dread, when those twelve strangers to my gates had come, of horses, dogs, or shields, they had brought none. I found no stallions in my paddocks green, no hounds were waiting in my kennels clean, but only sticks and trash and scraps of bone. The magic holding them alive had flown. And in my strong room where those shields had lain, nothing but withered toadstools now remained. A burning anger rose inside me then. What sort of wretch, what poor excuse for men could come as guests within my hall so high, and there betray my trust with ruse and lie. I mounted then, and with my warband raced along the track those thieves had gone in haste. But ere we reached the river, my pig's spoor had vanished. We could follow them no more. I knew then who that northerner had been. Such power is passing rare in mortal men. And only from the family of great dawn, Mathanwe's brood, could such a wizard come. To all my one and twenty contrasts wide, my messengers I sent, to swiftly ride and summon war bands, ready armed for fight, to meet me here before the second night, prepared to march. My insult price twice o'er I'd have from Gwyneth, as I grimly swore, and when at last he felt my vengeance sting, that green-eyed bar a different tune should sing. This is the first half of the poem. Um, I may do a longer version later.